Hello and welcome to this session with the CAD Guild. We are going to learn about NoSQL Database in Big Data. I'll start with some essential facts on NoSQL Database. NoSQL Databases stands for not only SQL or not SQL. It is a specific acronym given to a new type of databases which has evolved owing to the restrictions and challenges with the traditional databases. Traditional RDBMS uses SQL syntax and queries to analyze and get data. So what were the challenges in traditional RDBMS that led to the evolution of NoSQL? Let's find out. Not optimized for horizontal scaling out. Firstly, traditional databases are not optimized for the horizontal scaling out. If we can have a cluster of MySQL database, we can create shard, but this is not what they are designed for. For a huge data set, growing beyond hundreds of terabytes, we need a database, as SQL or Oracle is not a good fit for it. Schema-less data. Secondly, for the new type of data, we need some system which can have less constraint over the type of the data. As RDBMS do not support this, firstly, we must declare the schema, and then there are lots of constraints which can be imposed on the data. High velocity of data ingestion. Lastly, as RDBMS can be very expensive for large data set, it is not suitable when data keeps coming at a higher rate or high velocity data. All these together led to the evolution of NoSQL Database. Now let's have a look at the features of NoSQL Database. Generic Data Model The NoSQL Databases uses generic data model. There are heterogeneous containers, including diverse data types like sets, arrays, or maps, and they perform dynamic type discovery. We need not specify the data type all the time. This is something they will interpret, depending upon the type of data that is getting loaded. Dynamic Type Discovery and Conversion The conversions between the data using NoSQL is implicit. Non-related and denormalized The NoSQL database stores the data usually in a single table as they have less inclination towards joining of the data. The data is stored in raw format or denormalized format, which acts very useful highly distributable. Besides, no SQL database can be built in a cluster of commodity hardware as they are highly distributable. Commodity hardware. No SQL databases are based on the core principle of supporting horizontal scaling out. No SQL database types. Having learned about the features, let's now explore the no SQL data types. The first type is document databases. It is a database where every entry, every message, every row of the RDBMS is like one document containing key value pairs. They can have nested documents or the embedded documents. MongoDB is an example of one such database and an example of such element is record or the word document displayed on the screen. Each document contains diverse and heterogeneous fields. The example given contains the collection which has field name, place, and contact number. A collection is like a table. For the same collection, different documents can have different key value pairs that makes it quite heterogeneous and dynamic in the schema. The second type of NoSQL data type is graph stores. Sometimes there are a lot of dependencies on data. This can be a social network data like something on Twitter or it may be the purchase pattern or a purchase sale relationship. If there are a lot of relationship between different types of data, then in that situation, the traditional RDBMS uses a lot of join operation, which is quite an expensive operation. For such specific use cases, we have graph databases. Neo4j is one such example. The disadvantage of such database is that it might not be suited for different sets of problems. However, the advantage lies in the fact that if there is a lot of interconnections between the data, then this database is highly suited. A significant example is the social media data. Suppose there is a person who can be a friend of someone, and if the person likes something, then he can post also something. His post can get a lot of comments, which can be termed as relationships between the different entities forming a graph. 
In this graph, every node is an actor and every edge is like a verb. There is a relationship here between the edges and nodes are the entities or actors. The other example includes wild column stores. In this type of databases, we combine or group multiple columns together to create a column family. There are multiple advantages of using this, one of which is if you want to have data only from single column family, then the other column family are not scanned. Cassandra and HBase are a very good example for this particular data set, and they are excellent for performing lookup and range to scan a particular range of columns. So. This brings us to the first question, that is, which of the following is a challenge with the traditional RDBMS? That they are not optimized to scale out, or that they are not able to handle unstructured or varied structured data, or that they are unable to analysis data quickly or costly? If your answers are 1, 2, and 4, then you are right. Traditional RDBMS are not optimized to scale out and neither are they able to handle unstructured data. They can analysis the data quickly, which is good, but they are very costly. Another question is that which of the database is a graph database among Neo4j, HBase, Cassandra, and MongoDB? If your answer is Neo4j, yes, then you are absolutely correct. Here goes your next question. Which of the following is a database type that supports nested documents? wide column store, or document based, or graph databases, or column oriented databases. If your answer is document based, congratulations, you are right again. CAP Theorem We will now talk about an important theorem in NoSQL databases. NoSQL databases are meant for distributed storage. This can be explained by something like, suppose you are having a particular table which contains ID and age. There are IDs present starting from 1 and 2 to 1000. It makes sense to have it in one machine where you can store IDs from 1 to 250. The IDs 251 to 500 you can store in another machine and so on. Ultimately, we require four machines with the final machine having the IDs from 751 to 1000. This means you distribute the data by storing them across different machines. This is how the distribution works and assume that this is the design you are following. Let's get ahead with the challenges that we will come across in this case. CAP stands for Consistency, Availability, and Partition Tolerance. Consistency means the data in the database must be consistent before and after the execution. Suppose there are multiple users. In such case, every user should see the same data. Availability of the system should always be up and running, even in case if a few machines go down. It should be able to operate the working machines. And finally, it should be partition tolerant, even if the own machine goes down. This machine going down should not hamper the working of the other machines. Now, let's come back to our discussion where we have divided the data across the four machines. Suppose the machine 1 goes down and you won't be able to access the ID from 1 to 250, but the other ID can be accessible. In such case, you may increase the availability by increasing the application. Let's find out how. Store the same data on two machines. This will make it more available. Client or anyone can query the first node and second node to fetch the data. Even if the own machine goes down, we can always get the data from another machine. But think of a situation where if you do not maintain the duplicate data and if one record is present in only one machine, you might be having less availability but the consistency will become higher. Want to know how? Let's find out. In the previous example, if data was at the second place and if you had to update the data at one place, the same would not be immediately reflected to the other machine. Unless the updates are reflected, the design would be inconsistent as the client will get the different value for the same data on querying for it in different machines. So we see that this design is available, however, it is less consistent. On the other hand, if you do not replicate the data, this design is far less available 
but it is much more consistent as you need to make an update in case when there is an update to make in one place and every other user will be having the visibility to the new data. According to the CAP theorem, out of C, A, and P, you can have only two for the distributed database. Partition tolerance is quite mandatory as even if one machine goes down, you should be able to read from the other machines. If you intend to have availability by replication, then your consistency will be compromised. If you want to increase the consistency by not replicating your data, then your availability will be sacrificed. Out of C, A, and P, you must choose only two. Since partition tolerance is mandatory for distributed databases, you are left with option C, P, or A, P for no SQL databases. Cassandra is closer towards availability, whereas HBase is closer towards consistency. This brings us to a final question for this particular videos, which is the use case. Let's assume that we have 1,000 applications which access a no SQL database for lookup. The lookup table is a static one, and the content gets refreshed less frequently. If the application can tolerate working with stale data as well, which category of no SQL database should one opt for? CA, AP, CP, either CA or AP, but not CP. AP is available and partition tolerant. CP is consistent and partition tolerant. Give it a thought and you will find that if your answer is AP, then you are right, as in this design, consistency is far less important. We can tolerate with stale data and availability is more important since we are having 1,000 applications which need to access that table for lookup. Consistency is less important in this regard, more so as there is less change on the lookup table for the lookup table is less static. With that, I hope you have got an understanding of what exactly no SQL databases are what are the different categories of databases, and what is a CAP theorem. Thank you so much for watching this video. Stay tuned to ACAD Guild videos for a further introduction to different ecosystem components.